What's a red flag when looking for a job? Part 1. I had a team lead interview me for a contract once say bluntly, you don't want to work here, it's horrible. He was right and still undersold the experience somehow. And you still took the job? Come on, man. Temporary three to six month contract. I completed the project and moved on to the next contract. Places you always say they're hiring and always taking applications, but you never actually see anyone new being trained or anything. It means people are quitting constantly and management isn't hiring new people, so they are critically understaffed on top of poorly managed. I turned down a second interview for a position in which the interviewer said something to the effect of, if your boss emails you on a Friday night, you don't have to respond, but you know how that looks. Made it pretty clear that they expect work to be your first priority. It looks like I don't want that job, lol. This is also why I left my job. I don't want a job where I still have to work at home during rest days without getting paid. Boy, their audacity to make you do that is insane. I said I can work under pressure, not in sickness and in health till death do us part. Hiring lots of people in the same position, everyone who calls gets a job, either means the job is nonsense or they're setting you all up to compete for the actual job. I had this once. Turned out it was commission only, door-to-door -door vacuum sales. I did that for a month. My breaking point was when I was told I couldn't carry any water with me in what is essentially desert climate in the middle of summer. Was told to request a glass of water from random strangers. Same if I needed to use the bathroom. I wound up so parched I was risking real dehydration and the other salespeople had the nerve to drink all my water. Oh, and I sold a grand total of three vacuums. I actually have five sales, but I quit on a Friday and by Monday they claimed my last two sales were canceled and I now owe them something like $150 for accessories. I convinced them to zero out my entire account and just close it. ETA, since I have a lot of replies, asking which vacuum, it was Kirkby. When they nonsense talk about previous employees, they were going to do it to you. Same goes for them insulting current employees behind their backs. I saw that during my orientation. Two supervisors were loudly talking about how useless an employee was after they got off the phone with him. Even if it's true, the fact that they don't care who hears them is a sign of a toxic work environment. Typical behavior of managers who like to deflect blame for their own mistakes onto employees. Basically, a symptom of a terrible boss. When they say you could be earning six figures in less than a year. When the posting lists the salary range as $50,000 to $300,000, that means it's an all commission sales job. Also, the only way you will see six figures will be to rob a bank on the way home from work. Always ask them why the person you are replacing left the job. The way they answer this could be a red flag. I took a security guard job in college as a part-time gig. In the interview, the owner said the guy I was placing was just lazy. On my first day, I asked one of my co-workers and it turns out he was shot in the face while on duty. Too lazy to drive himself to the hospital, I guess? If the guy couldn't even keep bullets out of his own body, how can he be expected to keep people out of the building? Making jokes about overtime and crunch time. Guaranteed it's going to be nights and weekends are optional, but not actually optional place. I went to an interview where the guy said, we don't end the day until everyone is done, and sometimes that takes another hour on a busy day. Then my genius brain said, yeah, I don't want to work constantly overtime. What was I thinking, expecting to go home when my contract says I go home? In reality, maybe an hour overtime can easily turn into two hours overtime every day. Having to pretend this is normal is so toxic. Initially unpaid, but will result in full-time offer upon completion of XYZ. This will be an excellent chance to expand your portfolio and gain lots of exposure to leading global brands. The graphic designer here, my favorite response to this, you can die from exposure. Earning potential is stressed over the current salary. I applied to a place where they were offering me 30% less than what I was currently making. They said, that's because you'll be making that up in your performance bonus, plus more. Hard pass for me on that one, such a slap in the face of an offer. This was a red flag I had during an interview process once. I was doing a phone interview for an IT position, and the person I was interviewing with basically changed the details of the job during the interview. Instead of the first shift hours the position promised, he immediately went into saying it would be six plus months before the opportunity for the first shift would even be a possibility. Also, he was big into asking how dedicated I was to jobs. The idea of weekend shifts, again, not in the original description, kept coming up and how everyone had to be a team player and help out on weekends when needed. The kicker was when he started talking about how many hours he worked. 
He was bragging that he was up at 6 a.m. every day working. Then he'd go into the office for the day, come home to see his family for dinner, and get right back to work until 10 to 11 p.m. every night. I had never been turned off from a job faster in my life. He asked me to think things over and he'd send me some paperwork via email. Needless to say, I called him the next morning and declined the job. It was the worst interview process I'd ever been in. A couple of things. Open interviews. Admittedly, I've fallen for this a few times, but I was young and stupid. It's clear they have a high turnover, so they're trying to secure as many people as they can. Most of the time, these open interview jobs don't have salaries, just commission. Refusal or reluctancy to share details over the phone. This is what usually ends up in you turning up to an open interview. If they withhold information about the role, what you'll be doing, etc., that's a huge red flag. They just want to get you in the door for an interview to pressure you into joining. Looking for rock stars in the job description, unless of course the posting is in fact for a position to be a rock star. Similarly, ads that read along the lines of, do you like sports? Come be a part of our team. We're a laid back and have fun. We want all of our MVPs to succeed, so we work hard and we play hard too. If they're trying to sell you on the work environment in the ad, most of the time you should run. I'm sure there are exceptions, but most of the time, you can substitute rock stars and sports and MVPs and all these ads interchangeably, with all of it loosely translating to, we're gonna load a bunch of you up in a van at the butt crack of dawn to drop in neighborhoods for door-to-door -door cold calls selling cutlery. If you ask them what the pay is and they start off with what you could be making after so much time, and they start rambling about the raising process, run the other way. During my last interview for an entry-level, semi-skilled press operator position, the HR guy says my pay will be like this. If you hit your rate every day, factor in your attendance bonus, then if you go over rate, we'll pay you piece rate. They don't, I checked. And if the packing line gets your orders out on time and your quality is high enough and we don't get docked with any fees, a process over which I'll have no control after I wrap my pallet, you'll be making $15.20 an hour, or more if you sign up for Saturdays. But that's not what I asked. I asked what my base pay was going to be, to which he replied, $10.61 per hour. No, thank you. I've never heard such a complete pile of runaround nonsense. I got a call from a subway I applied to to tell me my interview was in 10 minutes. That was the first I heard from them after submitting my application. So years ago, my old company was hiring a mechanical engineer job, but the director of the department suddenly had a family emergency and had to go out of town the next day. They called the last applicant and said, can you come in and interview, like now? The candidate explained that he was out and about and couldn't get dressed or anything. The director basically said, don't care. That's how the dude that got the job got to interview in a black band t-shirt and ripped jeans. So before you red flag it, make sure that a sudden interview isn't warranted. High staff turnover. There's a place near me that's always hiring high level tech folks. And I mean, always. Just makes me think, meat grinder. Probably pays an absolute killing, but you're chained to your work laptop 24 seven. If the job description has about 20 items, of which one is sales, your job is going to be sales. If the job description has multiple items, then the majority of your duty is going to be the worst one of those items. A bit like occasional weekend means occasional weekend off. A manager who doesn't really interview you or doesn't take the interview seriously. They're on their phone the whole time, don't ask any questions, are too casual. Edited, too casual doesn't mean creating a relaxed environment or rapport with the interview candidate. Too casual, in my experience, was the guy, director of marketing, wearing jeans with a hole near the crotch and sitting with his legs open, on his phone the whole time, spitting chew into a can on his desk. Or the guys who have interviewed me and littered the interview with F-bombs and other vulgarities. Or talk nonsense about our known common acquaintances. Things like that. If it feels like you have the job before your interview, I once applied to a trainee position, I got to the interview and it felt like I had already got the position and the meeting was just for details. It was weird. He looked at my docs more as a formality, but apart from the excessive praise, I was never actually asked anything. I was told I would do a week trial with only travel expenses paid. During that week, there was no training or anything. I heard some not nice things, also some illegal things whilst there. The boss was making plans to go out of the country for an extended period within two months, and I'd be taking over for him as well as expected to bring in clients too. Also, I wasn't deemed to be working fast enough, and therefore they wanted to pay me less than four pounds an hour. I didn't go back. An employer who treats you like they were doing you a favor. With good servant leadership, it should be the other way around. 
an unclear job description, or a job description that includes too many duties. Not being offered the opportunity to see the working areas or talk to people who would be your peers. Just generally trying to feel out whether or not they have things under control or not. I don't want to walk into a garbage show. We work hard and play hard. It actually means all work and for sure no play. Translation, you will work 60 plus hours a week and you are expected to come to the company happy hour whether you drink or not. Also, we all stay here too much then go get hammered because we hate our spouses and children and will do anything to avoid going home. I arrived for an interview not too long ago. I showed up 15 minutes early and had all my certs to prove training. I waited over 20 minutes before the secretary led me to a conference room. Waited another 40 minutes and got fed up. The quality manager walked in as I was getting up to leave. He was very offended when I told him he had wasted my time and I would never accept a position after being left to wait almost an hour while having an appointment. Drove an hour and a half to a job interview once. The interviewer was traveling and I was supposed to meet them in the business center of their hotel. Waited for a little over an hour. Nobody showed or called me. Tried calling them straight to voicemail. I got fed up and left. 30 minutes into my drive home, I got a call back. They wanted to know where I was. Apparently, they were in an important meeting that ran long and couldn't call me or email me to let me know. I got calls from them for a month trying to set up an interview despite me telling them I wasn't interested every single time. We are a family here, which means this is how they try to make up for the garbage pay and long hours. This is the one I was looking for. Yes, it's a family in the sense that the company expects me to be willing to do anything to help you and your company anytime, anywhere, anyhow. You and your brothers and sisters, aka the other overworked, unappreciated peons, are conditioned to work harder to help each other out. The problem here is that the only people who benefit are the people at the top. 